In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a great formative assessment tool that's free on the internet, and it's called GoFormative.com, or just Formative. And Formative is great for classroom use. So basically what Formative does is it allows you as the teacher to send activities out to your students. The students do the activities and then you can give feedback to the students. You can mark their scores and you can even type in some written feedback that is sent to the students either immediately or later. So what you see here on the screen, this represents a teacher iPad, although it doesn't have to be on an iPad. And the teacher is seeing what the students are typing, the teacher is seeing what what the students are drawing in this case and the results of what they're drawing are sent to the teacher so that you can evaluate and give some feedback back to the students. So let's take a look at how you can get set up to use Formative. Basically you would start by going to GoFormative.com and then either sign up for a new account or if you already have one log into your account. Let's look quickly at the sign up process. It's pretty easy. When you click on sign up you need to first establish that you're either a teacher or a student so I'll go with teacher in this case and then just with a couple of clicks if you use Google you could sign up with Google and it would link your GoFormative account and your Google account same with Clever but you also have the option of just setting up an independent account that doesn't rely on Clever or Google so give me a few seconds to sign up for a free account and then we'll get started once you're signed up for Formative, it should automatically sign you in. And the first time you sign in, you'll probably get a welcome, just like I did. And you can see that there's a video tutorial that gives you some of the basics of how to use Formative. In this case, I'm just going to X out of the message, and it takes me to my Formative home screen. And this is where I will create and store activities, basically they call them assignments, that I'll be able to send out to my students. Notice that I am given automatically four formative assignments that I can practice with. A sample and then some quick activities or assignments that I can assign out to students. But I would like to show you how to create your own from scratch. So to do that, just click New Assignment and it takes you to a screen where you can create an assignment or activity that you want to send out to your students. First thing I need to do is highlight the title and give it a new title. So I'm going to title this Spanish Body Vocabulary. So this is for teaching and learning the body parts in Spanish. I've got my title now. Next, I can add either a question or content. Now you can also upload and transform. So let me just briefly talk about that. If you click on Upload and Transform, in theory at least, you should be able to click and drag a file, let's say a Word document or a PowerPoint presentation, maybe even a PDF, and drag and drop it in this box. Or you could just click to upload a document. You would just select the document that you would like to upload and it would appear there. If it goes well, it should upload and transform into Formative's format and you might be able to use it in your formative activities. In this case though, I'm just going to create it from scratch and I'm going to start with add content. So I'll click on that and think of this add content as things that you want the students to read, things that you want the students to watch or to look at, let's say an image. And these could be hints for the students or it could be a way to activate their background knowledge, but it's meant to be something for them to see or take in typically before they answer a question. So in this case, I would like to start with a text block. So I'll just click text block and it says give this content a title and I'll just put in the body in Spanish. Okay, so that's how you say the body. Next, I can click to enter any text I would like the students to see. So now I can just click away from that box and that is now part of this activity or assignment that I'll be sending out to my students. Now I could also click add content and put in an image and it's easy to do so. You just drag a picture into this box or click to upload and choose a picture that's on your computer and then open it and it will add that picture into the assignment or activity. You can also do the same thing with YouTube. So I could click on YouTube, I could type in video and do a search. So I just typed in El Cuerpo, hit enter, and that might be a good way to find a video that you could include and that you could send out to your students so that they could watch the video to help them learn. In this case, I don't really need that, so I'm going to click on this trash can symbol to delete that component of this assignment. Same with image. I'll get rid of that as well. One last kind of content that you can add is a view-only canvas. 
If you click on that, this gives you a canvas on which you as the teacher could draw something or you could write something as if it were a smart board or a whiteboard. And so you could write out just by clicking on a color and clicking and dragging to draw. Or you could also switch to text. I just clicked on here and then clicked on the canvas and you can type things on the text. But whatever you put on to this view only canvas, the students will be able to see it, but they won't be able to draw on it. Okay, again, I don't really need that, so I'm going to delete it. And I think I'm finished adding content, at least for now. I would like to add my first question for the students. So I'll click Add Question. There are four different kinds of questions that I can ask the students. Let's start with multiple choice. So I'll click on that and put in my question. Next, I put in some answers. So I'll just click where it has the A, and you can either delete the A or leave it there, doesn't matter. I'll just put in some wrong answers, and I'll also put in the correct answer, okay? So the correct answer, I need to mark it as correct by clicking the check mark next to it, and notice that I could add even more possible answers just by clicking add a new option. Underneath, it shows me which one is the right answer. This is just a way to verify that I have done it correctly. Over here on the right, I can decide how many points this particular question is worth. Maybe it's extra hard and it's worth more than 10, or maybe it's extra easy. So in this case, I'm gonna make it worth five points. Now I can click add question to move on and ask another kind of question. True false is just what you would expect. It's basically multiple choice. We also have short answer which is a great option, especially if spelling is important or numbers, if it's a math class or a science class and there's a definite right or wrong number that's the answer, then short answer is a great option. So I could put something like spell the Spanish word for head. Next, I could click to enter what the correct answer or answers are. So the correct answer is la cabeza. But what if the students forgot to put the word la at the beginning? I would like to also accept cabeza without la. And of course, you could continue to add more correct answers as well. Now, this question is a little harder because they have to produce the answer instead of just identify it. So I'm going to leave it at 10 points. It's worth more than my first question. Now, in both examples that I've shown, notice that there is an option to add help text. Just with a click, I could enter some information that might help the students. So in this case, I might say, remember to include the word the at the beginning, something like that. In this case, I really don't need that, so I'll go ahead and move on. So hopefully you can see how easy it is to add questions that you'll be able to ask the students. The next type of question, though, that I would like to highlight is one of the most exciting aspects of Formative, or GoFormative.com. And that is this type of question, show your work. If you click on that, it allows you to put in a question for the students to answer, and then it gives them a blank canvas on which to draw or upload images. And those images are how they answer your question. So an example I can give you is I would like my students to draw a picture of una cabeza con mucho pelo, which is a head with lots of hairs, with lots of hair. All right. So those are the instructions for the students, and it's as easy as that to create a drawing activity for the students. Notice what it says. I could add a background image, but currently my students will have a blank canvas on which to draw and or upload images. So this is exactly what I want in this case. I'm gonna add one more question, and this one's gonna also be a show your work question. But in this case, I would like them to circle la mandibula which of course is the mandible or the lower jaw, on this picture. Okay, what picture? Well, if I click add a background image, I can select a picture. So there's a picture I would like to use. I just selected it and uploaded it in, and now that's what the students will see. And then they will have these tools that they can use to circle the correct answer. Okay, this is a pretty good activity or quiz that my students could benefit from. So let's say I'm done. I could preview it, and I could preview it at any time, really. But by clicking preview, this shows me approximately what it will look like for the students as they answer my questions and as they receive this assignment and try to do it. When they're done, they'll click submit. Okay, so now that I've previewed it, I'm really ready to send this out to my students. Okay, in this case, I'm gonna click first on live results and it loads up question number one. 
Now, how can my students access this? How will they interact with these questions and answer them? They need to first go to their device, whether it be an iPad, an Android device, or a laptop, a Chromebook, or a desktop computer. It doesn't really matter as long as it's a device that can access the internet through a web browser. So here I am on my iPad, and let's pretend like this is a student iPad. All the students would have to do is go down to Safari, wherever that is on their iPad, and tap it to open up Safari, and then they would have to navigate to goformative.com just by typing it into the web browser and tapping go. That'll take them here, and then they can just tap right here where it says log in. And then the student can connect to this activity that I'm doing live with them just by tapping here where it says quick code. But basically, this quick code, how do I get that? What is that quick code? Where do the students find it? So let's look back in the teacher account and see where we can find that code. Here I am back in my live results. If I click on assign, notice that there's options for enable this activity or assignment for everyone or for only classes. And notice that there are some other ways that students could access it. They could go here to goformative.com slash join, or you could create a link to this particular assignment or activity. You could use it in Google Classroom or use an embed code. So there are some good options if you wanna just make it publicly available for everyone. But if you would like to assign it to specific classes of yours only, you can just click only classes and then add a new class or edit classes that maybe you've already established. So I'll click add class, create a new class. What should I call it? I'll call this Spanish one, click OK. And I currently have no students in this class. How could I enroll my students? Notice that there is a class code and that's one of the best ways to enroll your students in your classes. But let's look at the entire list of options you have for enrolling your students. There's some really excellent options. Basically, if your school uses Google Apps for Education, it's going to be really easy. They would just follow these instructions here. Or if your school uses Clever, or you could import your students directly. You could fill in a spreadsheet with the student names and then email it to this address and they will be enrolled in your class. Informative. Another option is to display the class code, this code here that uh, is associated with the class I just created and just display that code on the board in my classroom or I could print it out on a handout and send it home with the students. Then the students just go to this address, use the class code, and they will be able to sign up and be enrolled in my specific class. There's another option here for multiple teachers that may or may not be applicable to you. I'll click OK. So I've just created one class, but I could continue and create more and more classes if I would like. Next up, I'm going to go back to the dashboard, and there's my activity that I created. I'll click on it, and now I'll assign it. Now, I could go back into Edit first, just so that you'll recognize where I just came from a minute or two ago. And I'll just click Assign. So now, instead of assigning it to just everyone, I'll assign it to only specific classes, and you turn on the classes you would like it to be assigned to. Now that I've done this, my students in Spanish 1 will be able to access the assignment and complete it and turn it in. Notice that I've set it to be open right now, so they still can answer the questions and submit the assignment. You could close it with scoring. Students can't respond, but they can see the scores of how they did. Or you can do instant scoring. Okay, so those are some options that you have. So now that I have created this assignment and I have assigned it, in this case, to my class, Spanish 1, let me pretend for a minute that I'm a student and I will try to get enrolled in this class and complete the assignment. So jumping back over to my iPad, I'll just tap sign up because this is my first time using Formative as a student. Next, I'll just tap on student. I'll tap to put in a first name and a last name an email or username, and a password. Next, I'll tap Create Free Account, and it asks for, now, a class code. So here I am back in the teacher account, and if you remember, this is the class code for this class that I've assigned the assignment to. So as the student, I'm gonna need to put in that code into my iPad or whatever device I'm using to sign up for Formative so I can participate in these assignments that the teacher is sending me. So back on the iPad, I'm just going to type in the rest of that code, tap let's do this, and the student is now allowed to join a class. And it says, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. 
I'm part of that class and it's going to give me access now to the class and I can tap on Spanish 1 and I can see that there's already an assignment assigned to me. I tap on it, it opens up and I can see the content that was added, in this case just some text, but maybe a picture, maybe a video, or a read-only canvas. And then I can answer some of these questions. How do you say hands in Spanish? Okay, so as a student I can just put in what the answer is, what I think it is. I'll put in a wrong answer here. And then next up the student can draw the answer to this particular question. Okay. And you can see that they have different tools. They've got a line tool here. They've got the pencil tool and different colors that they can use as they try to draw. Okay, underneath that, you can see it says circle la mandibula on this picture. And so the students, again, just select one of these colors, select one of these tools, and then they can circle what they think the right answer is. Okay, when they're done, they tap submit. And it says, your work has been submitted. Great, I can go back to the dashboard. Now let's look back in the teacher account, back in dashboard, because I as the teacher can go into this assignment and I can click on live results and I can see and watch as my students answer these questions. And this is especially powerful with the drawing type questions. So I can leave this question up and just watch as the students circle the different parts of the skeleton here trying to get the right answer. And in this case, I can watch as they try to draw la cabeza, una cabeza con mucho pelo. And I can see which students are struggling and which ones are getting it. And let's say Jason here is struggling a little bit. I could just click on Jason's drawing and I could give him some feedback and some help. So I could click where it says type feedback here. So I could maybe give some feedback. So what is that at the right? Or I could ask for a clarification, things like that. And then I can click to send that message to the student. Now I can also just right then and there tell the student how they're doing and how many points they have earned for this assignment. So maybe this is worth eight out of 10. I'm just clicking and dragging on this slider. So formative or goformative.com is a great way, I think, to do some formative assessment with your students. Now, at the end of an activity, you can export the activity. Just click that export button. It downloads a copy of it and you can open it up and see the results of how your students have done. You'll see their total points and the questions that they struggled with and the specific answers that they gave to your questions. So I can now go back to the main homepage there in formative and you can see it shows here's my quiz and there's one response. Now there's a few more things I could show you about formative. For example, the profile, you can go in there to put in some profile information about yourself. And of course there's the classes tab that we've already looked at a little bit. You can see here at the right, there's a new folder button. You could organize these activities and assignments into folders. But really what I've shown in this video is what you need to know in order to successfully use formative with your students. I really like formative. I think it's one of the very best formative assessment tools that are available. It falls into the same kind of category, I think, as Nearpod, although there are definitely some differences. But I do think it's a formative assessment tool that teachers really need to be aware of and take it into account when deciding what online tools to use for formative assessment. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy using Formative and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And if you have any recommendations for videos you'd like to see me make, please make those recommendations in the comments below.